My name is Barry and welcome to my teaching corner. Today we'll be doing um, a stitch with me as usual. Um, so this is the Vintage Summer Garden uh, bookshelf. Uh, artwork by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is the regular chart, regular everything. Um, if anyone is interested, here are some of the details. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, I'm working um, in this corner right now. So kind of like working towards the first shelf and sort of in this in this pattern. Um, so yeah, let's get stitching. I'm just going to open up my pattern keeper um, and identify which color is up next. So oh, that's one of those that has a single stitch. Okay. So I'll be stitching um, right here. So let me just grab grab my floss. So we're having a rainy day today and it's kind of like dreary and foggy and now that it's the summer and not the winter, uh, we have to pull out our dehumidifier uh, in order to collect all that moisture that's out there in the air. So we have the thing on full blast uh, running in the background as well as the dishwasher because it's the weekend and we didn't do the dishes last night. And so we had to uh, kind of like catch up this morning, sort of to speak. Um, so things kind of like start, start on a clean, on a clean beginning for the weekend. Um, it's been probably a couple of, a week and a half at least since I worked on this project. Um, so I've missed it a little bit. I really like how quickly I'm able to get uh, large amounts of progress because it's 10 stitch. Um, and that was it. I? Fairly, what did you do? Oh, you can't do that. That's a shoe. <laughs> that our doggy girl has been doing weird things that she has never done before like so interest in shoes so it probably stinks real good um, but not very good from behavior perspective okay so I think there's a couple of stitches in this area, but I just need to make sure that I'm counting it all right. There's a whole bunch of those a little bit upper upper here above the shelf, so I'm not sure if that translates in the camera, but this little blue, that's the, that's the shelf, uh, the shelf base. Um, and so I kind of want to stop at the shelf base so I can kind of like work um, with those almost ribbon-like pattern all right, so let me just do some counting because those are in the middle of nowhere kind of stitches. So this is the corner. And so I need one, two, three, four on the fifth and on the fourth. So one, two, three, four on the fifth. One, two, three, on the fourth. Oops. Ah, that's not right. Oh no, I got stuck. <laughs> okay, what do I do now? I go through. 
Alone, okay, so let me just do the math again. One, one, two, three, four on the fifth and then on the fourth. Okay. So one, two, three, four on the fifth. One, two, three on the fourth. Ah, I lost it again. <laughs> one, two, three, four, fifth. One, two. Three, I forgot to grab my here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Wow. <laughs> so that happens sometimes. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's a bit embarrassing. Um, okay, and then this one is on the fourth. So one, two, three, on the fourth. I'm not sure why the counting was so difficult right now. It was almost a one of a kind type of a struggle. So anyhow, I was saying it's rainy and dreary outside, which is the perfect weather for a muddy adventure. So we're planning on having a muddy adventure um, outdoors with the dog, um, which probably will result in a, a bubbly bath afterwards for her because <laughs> she gets very serious about her muddy adventures okay the next one is 400 so let me just pull this one out So I finally found my needle threader. It was buried up with all of my uh, needle, needle graveyard. Um, I call it that way because when the coating runs out and starts to go like oxidizing, I tend to um, stop using those needles because it really, the, the texture frustrates me and um, so I retire them and for some reason I put my needle threader together with all of those needles uh, and that's where it was all this time. I was doing a little bit of a clear out of my needle section um, today because I needed to, I was thinking about dividing my needles that are on the go between um, do the different sizes because right now they're just kind of like floating up and I roughly know what it is because I can compare them but I just wanted to have like a separate separate place where I can keep different sizes that I'm using so they're not brand new but they're still kind of like in use um, and so I was looking at all the needles that I have and then I saw 
the needle thread work together with the retired or the graveyard ones. So I very quickly pulled it out because I would like to use it. <laughs> especially with the 28 size needles. With the 24, I can almost 100% um, fill it up with accuracy into, into the needle, like the, the floss or the thread. Um, 26 is, sometimes it's a struggle, but the 28, I don't think uh, I'm able to um, thread the needle just with my, just with my hands, my fingers, without looking it. I don't imagine licking the thread is a good practice, just because transferring bacteria into the canvas. So I think the default color that Pattern Keeper is using for highlighted symbols is green, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it depends on what color I'm stitching, or like the majority of what I'm stitching, I, uh, I change it up so it is a bit easier to see it. Um, so I think because I was stitching here a lot at the beginning, the green on green, I couldn't really see probably as well. Of the stitched up green versus the selected green. So I changed it to like this neon pink, um, like magenta. Um, and now it's actually a little bit more challenging to find those magentas up in this area because of the uh, red flowers. Hey, Carly, can you please leave the shoes alone? Thank you. Come on over here. Come on over here on the carpet. That's really good. That's a really good girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. I'm not mad with you. I just want you to stop it. Okay? Go on the carpet, please. Can you go on the carpet? Can you go on the carpet? Good girl. Go on the carpet. Good way. So, my aim with her is to just redirect her from what she's doing, and hopefully, with enough redirections, she's going to kind of like not necessarily memorize, but it just internalize that whenever she does something, I end up calling her and she doesn't get to keep on doing it. Um, yeah, it's tough training dogs. <laughs> they have a little bit of a different way of, like their brain just works differently. So they don't necessarily understand things the way that we understand them. and vice versa, so sometimes finding the language that we both understand is a little bit, takes time, takes time. Okay, so next one is 3826. So I have to tell you something. I have been focusing on a very limited number of projects this month um, on top of my full coverages, Heaven and Earth's uh, designs. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but I started feeling a little bit overwhelmed with producing progress and noticeable progress in each one of the whoops that I have. And I think I kind of run ran into my upper limit of how much I can sanely do <laughs> without feeling overwhelmed that things don't get finished or enough progress. Hey girly, can you leave it alone? Can you leave it alone please? Girly, leave it alone. Um, I think I had around the eight, eight to nine projects and some of them were uh, heaven and earth design so those are I have three of them uh, but the majority of them were kind of like your medium medium size and what I consider medium is between the 7,000 to a little bit more than that and 
I just started feeling overwhelmed that things are not getting done and I'm going to be stuck with the same projects for a really long time. So I decided to try and limit the number of uh, projects on the go that I have. And instead of um, stitching a little bit on each one of them uh, throughout the month, uh, for now to just focus on one larger project and have one to two secondary projects that I kind of do just to cleanse my palette um, so I don't go crazy with just a single with just a single project and so I have been working a lot on the Alice in Wonderland stitch along um, that was hosted by um, uh, Owl First Embroidery and that one I started well the first time I started it was in January but then I had to restart it because I chose the wrong fabric uh, and I did that towards the end of um, February so it's been quite a while since I had it on my go um, but I don't feel like I've been doing the appropriate progress on it as as it deserves in order, deserves in order to get completed uh, and so I decided to focus on it a little bit more um, and I've been almost I wouldn't say exclusively been working on it but I've done the most amount of stitching days on it um, and so I got a little bit more progress than uh, the previous months and that feels really good it just feels really nice to have something um, where I can have like a substantial amount of progress um, even if I don't touch a lot of the other stuff that I have. Um, so, and then I've been also working on the, uh, the moons. I think the pattern called Shine On, it was from one of the magazines. Um, you can see it in my April wrap up because that's where I introduced the progress that I've done with it. And so that was my secondary project and I'm almost finished with it. Um, so that feels very nice because then I could just tick the box off and, and move on to, to other projects that I have. And um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing on top of the full coverages that I have because those just need to be um, stitched on, like time has to be invested on them because otherwise they, they're they're not gonna happen <laughs> um, so uh, let me just pick up the next the next color So yeah, I'm kind of in this discovery phase of how many projects is too much, how, much, how many is too little, uh, how much do I invest in each project in a month, how many days. Um, I recognize that the reason I was working on multiple projects in a day was because I was anxious um, towards the end of the semester. Um, and so I felt like, oh, I just wanna do everything and get progress on everything. Um, even though I wasn't able to actually do it, but just kind of like that tension and anxiety manifested itself in my uh, scatterness in terms of cross-stitching uh, habit. And I don't want that to happen because that's not, I don't think that's really healthy. <laughs> At least when I recognized it, I was like, okay, if that's the reason why I do this, um, I should be more careful. Um, because I think that can very quickly spiral out of control and I could end up with way too many projects on my plate um, and that's going to be very difficult to wrap them up. So I've been trying to kind of like um, remember that whenever I feel like I want to start a new project even though I have lots of things to work on right now and um, I remind myself I I can finish some things and then I can start that and finishing takes time and because just because I start something it, it's not gonna finish itself and it's gonna take me even longer to finish those two things if I have two things on the go um, 
so that's what I've been doing lately kind of like slowing down a little bit in terms of like my desire to sprint um, and focusing on fewer projects but getting more progress in each one of those um, which is not easy some days like some days I just feel like oh I just want to start like what's wrong with starting things but I have to remember that whenever I start something it also means that you need to finish it Okay, I'm just gonna need to do some math right now. One, two, three, four on the fifth. So one, two, three, four on the fifth. One down. Um, does anyone have this feeling when you go on a walk and you're enjoying your walk so much and your walk is kind of on a downhill angle and so you just wanna keep on just want to keep on hiking but it's the, the more you go downhill you have to retrieve it all back right um, and one, two, three. Um, and so yeah like pace yourself everything you pass through, you have to pass through again um, in walks, unless someone picks you up at the end. So that's my analogy with cross-stitching. The, the more you start, You have just things to finish and of course some people just love just love the act of stitching um, but I think some of us we love to see things complete like have the projects complete um, Yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but <laughs> maybe in the future I'll have my thoughts formulated a little bit better and I can make more sense of them. It's more something that I'm discovering for myself right now and the importance of knowing how I function and what makes me feel comfortable. So I think this is the edge of one of the books. It's very flat, straight. So I think that's the edge of one of the books. I'm very near to starting stitching the actual books. So far it's just flowers and background, which is also very nice. I really like how it's turning out. The, the detail, um, it's not the sharpest, but it's there. And the amount of colors that exist um, make it feel like there's a lot of stuff going on.
now that the humidifier stopped working, probably because it reached the desired humidity, it feels so quiet in here. <laughs> I'm not sure how it translates in the uh, through the camera, through the microphone. I guess I'll have to, I'll see it once I actually edit the video, but it just feels so quiet right now. And the doggy girl finally settled. <laughs> she kind of like gave up. Like, I can't chew anything. That's not fair. <laughs> oh. Ooh, we're gonna do some blue right now. So those uh, purple flowers, the, the way that they achieve um, the shading is by having Sorry, I'm just picking up some floss. Is by having uh, blue incorporated into them. So if, I think you can see it right here. There's uh, very blue stitches um, along the uh, along the shaded parts of the flower. And so now I'm going to be filling up that for this flower as well. Yeah, it's like the little things that you don't necessarily think about until you actually start stitching them and you start seeing things um, at a very slow speed. So you have time to think about what you're doing and how it appears and the colors that go into uh, each section. I think that's a very uh, meditative, meditative state, state of mind because you're kind of like focusing on a small area for a long time and you start noticing every single little bit that goes into that, into that area. Oh, and there's the dehumidifier goes up again. In the summer months, um, I don't even know how big it is. I think it's four gallons. Uh, that the capacity that we have it's like a small apartment dehumidifier um, we would have to empty it, it empty it out quite frequently in the winter because it's so cold the humidity is much lower um, so actually we need to have a humidifier <laughs> um, and in the summer it's warm and and rainy and it actually gets quite humid so we need to use dehumidifier. So for those kind of things, we just, when we get them, we never throw the boxes out because we know that we'll need those to pack, pack things away for their seasonal usage. And it's always much nicer to have things packed in a, in a box, especially the one that it came with, uh, like the original box. So remember when I just started this piece, so, it's, so this is my first 10 stitch, my first easy guide, um, and also my first 25 count. So lots of lots of firsts in here. Um, and for anyone who saw my very initial uh, stitch with me's for this particular project, um, remember how, how much of a hard time I had with the visualization of the tent, the counting of the stitches in this easy guide 
and I mean the size was less of a challenge for me I think I mean of course it's challenging to see smaller but I, uh, that didn't feel as much of a barrier as the tent and the um, the easy count um, and I'm finally am able to say that I'm getting used to it <laughs> so about eight and a half thousand stitches in I'm starting to feel more and more comfort comfortable uh, with this uh, with this combination of fabric technique and uh, and size because oh my at first it was such a struggle it was such a struggle to just just do the basic stuff even so if you're feeling like it's hard <laughs> it is <laughs> um, it is difficult There's just a couple of stitches of blue left in here, or of this particular shade of blue. So I'm feeling okay with jumping around. Um, I think that with this confetti heavy area, uh, the small size, and I think this is as bulky as it will get. And that just feels like when I'm running my hand underneath it. Um, and if I'm having the 28 size uh, needle, it's kind of okay, um, in my opinion. Now, keep in mind, I'm not that experienced. Uh, so maybe what I'm doing is questionable for some more experienced uh, full coverage stitchers. Um, but I'm managing, and I'm not feeling like I'm struggling too much. And I feel pretty comfortable with jumping around and just stitching. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Now we have a little bit of shading added here. That's nice. Okay. So the next color, let's see what we have. That is a gray. Just looking if there's any. Okay. So I've mentioned in my stitch with me, my last stitch with me, which was the sanctuary of knowledge that I have been um, pre-cutting my thread, uh, my floss, to uh, 80 centimeters. So I end up with 10 um, strands of six <laughs> twisted um, within each one of the links. And I like that 40, um, well, when you fold it, it's 40 centimeters. Um, but I like it because with this particular project, that's more than enough uh, area to cover for me. And because I do cross country and I complete the thread before moving on to a different color, um, that's just enough for me to not get too bored, but still get enough stitches in. Um, for anything um, that is a smaller count, i.e. larger, larger stitches, um, then I can always just to take two strands um, and not start with a loop start. And that just gives me a little bit more than what I would have had if I had a 50 centimeter. Anyhow, so I kind of find that as a nice, um, nice length to work with that is suitable for the different projects that I'm working on. So if anyone is interested, 
um, that's kind of what I've been doing lately. It feels like I'm stitching a little bit slower today just because of all the padding that I need to do to make sure that I'm not missing any stitch. So that's one of the downsides of doing this like cross country, cross country style is that you spend a lot of time panning around on your pattern just trying to find where else do those stitches occur. Um, so that's kind of like choose and pick what you prefer, right? Uh, do you want to just continuously work, but then have a lot of, you know, panning around to do, or do you want to cut your floss or do parking, but then you have to change the thread on your needle quite often, so. There isn't necessarily right or wrong, it's more what's your preference. When I stitched um, those two spots, so there's one blob here and one blob here, uh, it almost felt like I didn't do anything. Like it's so subtle, such a light color that I think it occurred maybe somewhere here or here. And there's so few of them that I had to continue. I had to continue in here as well. And yeah, once I stitched it, it felt like I haven't really done anything because I can barely see it so now it feels nice to kind of like add a little bit of sh shadow and shading in those area because right now I'm going with this slightly darker darker gray so at least at least that clump of cream can can be visible uh, with the help of this slightly darker gray okay Let me see at the time. About 39 minutes. I think I've been chatting more than stitching because I'm looking at my pattern keeper and only have 120 stitches. But to be fair, there were some like ninjas and confetti in here, so I had to switch the thread quite often. Um, but I think I think I'll stop it at here, um, just because I'm already starting to feel a bit antsy uh, for sitting. Well, that's that's my limit, right? 40 minutes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm able to do a little bit longer than that, but I think 40 minutes is about as good as it gets. So here's what the pattern pattern keeper looks like. I'm almost at two two and a half percent, so 2.47, 121, 8,651 stitches, um, and here is what we've done. So. Thank you very much for stitching with me today. I always enjoy stitching with me uh, with you. And uh, if you have stayed until now, uh, comment, what are you stitching? <laughs> what have you been stitching with me? Because that is very interesting and I would love to share it with everyone else. So yeah, 
have a lovely day and I'll see you later. Bye.